Okay, so here we have a question. It's a goodness of fit question. And let's read it. The first significant the first significant digit in any number must be one through nine. It was discovered that first digits do not occur with equal frequency. Probabilities of occurrence to the first digit in a number are shown in the accompanying table. The probability distribution is known <clears throat> is now known as Benford's law. For example, the following distribution represents the first digits in two hundred and fourteen allegedly fraudulent checks written to a bogus company by an employee attempting to embezzle funds from his employer. Complete parts A through C below. So let's see, A says A says what? Because these data are meant to prove that someone is guilty or fraudulent, what would an appropriate level of significance be <clears throat> we would want that to be the lowest one 0 0.01 our default one is 0 0.05 so we'll go with 0 0.01 part b using the level of significance chosen test whether the first digits in the allegedly fraudulent checks obey benford's law do the first digits obey benford's law so in this case the null hypothesis is benford's law that the digits obey benford's law the alternative is that they don't so the null will always be that it conforms to some distribution. Either it's a uniform distribution, binomial distribution, Benford's distribution, whatever. Some distribution, Poisson, whatever. The alternative is that it's not. All right, so how do we do the test? Well, okay, what is this? They give us this data here. So the bottom table is our observed values. So... There were 36 where the first 36 checks where the first digit was a 1, 32 digits, 32 checks where the first digit was a 2 and so forth. Benford's law says that the the significant digit should follow these percentage distribution. So 1 should be 30% of the time and the lowest percent the check should start with a 9. Okay? All right, all right. So we have our observed values. <clears throat> we want to see if they fall in line with Benford's law. <clears throat> we could throw the observed values in L1, which I already did. If I go to edit, L1, I have all my observed values. I added those up because I didn't realize that it gave us 214 somewhere right here. So we already know that the sum of L1 is 214. We have the distribution. What we need is the expected values. We get those by, by Benford's law. So in L2, notice that I put the, the percentages according to Benford's law. If I multiply that times 214, I'll do it for you. I go 214 times L2. It gives me all those values in L3. Those are the expected values. I need those when I do the chi-squared goodness of fit test, which I'll do. Stat, test, chi-squared goodness of fit test. I uh, put in L1 for the observes, L2. L3 for the expected. Degrees of freedom are 9, or sorry, they're 8, because there's 9 categories, so 9 minus 1 is 8. So that's how I get my chi-squared value of 54.845. 54.845, and we get a p-value of something basically 0, 0 plus. And then we, so yeah, so we're going to read the conclusion. We're going to reject H naught since the p value is less than 0 0.01. And then we can say there's sufficient evidence. Sufficient evidence to conclude that. Sufficient evidence to conclude that. Um, the checks don't follow Benford's law. Benford's law. Or they don't obey Benford's law. Okay, that's it.